Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode in Between Two Consultants. My name is Nicholas Kelly. And I'm Ethan Silvers. And today we're kicking off a new segment which is Top 5 Mistakes. And we're going to start it off with the Top 5 Mistakes in Dashboarding. So Ethan, I'll hand it over to yourself to start throwing out those Top 5 and we'll have a little bit of a chat on each one of them. And, and Nick's being kind. Um, Nick is going to be evaluating my responses um, and uh, Nick if you're going to give me a score and embarrass me I appreciate that uh, so uh, let, let's let's see how I do Nick let's see how me as your protege does in in this activity I'm looking well, forward to it yeah let's, so, let's let's hear it what's number one all right well I, in no particular order I'm going to go with what I've learned from you is that it should be actionable so not actionable would be a big mistake. Absolutely. It's it's like one of the biggest reasons for low adoption of reports and dashboards. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't move the needle for the business. You know, people are sitting there looking at their dashboards and reports and they're just kind of wondering, well, yeah, so what? So that one is like, there's no so what. Just like, yeah, yeah. this is cool. It's information, but I'm not doing anything. So easy to fall into the trap. Super easy to fall into the trap. And it can take quite a bit of effort to uh, to figure out a dashboard and design a dashboard that is actionable. So I, I totally agree. I think it's a really good one. I'd nearly even put it. Uh, that's a that's a top three uh, challenge for sure. All right. So if you're going to score me on that, what score would I get? Uh, let's go with a, a 17 out of 18. I think it was very good. Oh, that's good. That's a good number. I'm, I'm happy with that. It certainly beat what my uh, school, how I used to score in, in school um, when I was doing schooling a few years back. All right, okay. another That's one. good to hear, yeah. Big, big mistake, calling dashboarding visual analytics. That's a hot potato, that one. Um, and I hope you appreciate the, the cultural context of potato because I'm, I'm from Ireland. Actually, uh, I recall growing a potato in the uh, back of the, 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 the parents garden. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Grew, like put the potato on the ground. It grew, you know, like, the, you know, four or five potatoes came out of it. Um, so yeah. And uh, obviously very related to the topic at, at hand here. And, yeah. But I have so many questions about your, uh, potato patch. Yeah. It was, it was just the one plant. So it's a uh, patch would be a very aggressive description of what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, have so, yeah, dash, I have to do one again dashboarding versus visual analytics is that a thing what you call it yeah it, look this one's always tough because you could also call it like data visualization but like mm. it does i think it does a great disservice to what it is because at its core going back to your first one actionable it should be driving you know some sort of change and impact in the organization so just say like it's it's dashboarding. Sure, that's what it is. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But its impact is far broader than that. And then, you know, visual analytics is an attempt to say, well, okay, it's more than just data visualization. We're doing analytics in a kind of, you know, you would interpret it visually, right? So, but that still does a disservice. I don't think there's a perfect term out there for what it is. Um, it is a challenge that goes somewhat unresolved. Okay. Um... So uh, we're, we're, we're not going to say whether that's a mistake or not. Yeah, it's hard to say because you could call it anything and you, you'd still be. Look at that. I have stumped. I have stumped Nicholas Kelly. <laughs> uh, if we had a little more uh, production value to this, I, we'd probably put in some sort of dinging sound <laughs> right now. So just to the viewers, just do that in your own head. Yeah. And, uh, and, and imagine like a, a, you know, a, a sparkle in the eye as well. <laughs> There you go. All right. Next one. Um, we did not actionable. We did the naming. How about uh, not knowing what the objective is, not having a clear understanding of the objective? Right. So I, I think that one kind of would tie to, okay, it doesn't align to a strategic goal for the organization, let's say. And then, you know, when you talk about strategic goals and like you said, yeah. objectives, an objective has to tie and roll up to a strategic goal. So an objective then would hopefully be something that's measurable and almost never happens in dashboarding. And uh, so I agree, it is a very major mistake to not start with some intent or some direction towards what we're trying to achieve. We did a, a, an episode 
uh, with Robert there on uh, the actual do building a dashboard and and Robert was really good at having measurable goals and objectives where an example of one is, you know, a 5% increase in sales. It's a tremendous way to start. Um, yeah. But the mistake is we often don't do that. Most of the time we don't have some measurable uh, goal and objective. So yeah, I, I agree. That's a good one. It's, um, and I, I think it only really comes with some maturity in dashboarding. Uh, it's, it's probably not the first one you want to you wanna figure out because it's a really hard one. Like it yeah. requires leadership buy-in, executive buy-in, all those good things, right? So, um, agreed, it is a it is a mistake, um, but maybe it's not right there at the the number one spot. Ah, missed it. Um, maturity. You brought up maturity, a word that is not usually ascribed to the hosts of Between Two Consultants. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about this? Um, uh, I'll, I'll I'll draw a scenario. I'm dashboarding. Because there's things that I want people to know and have access to. And I just go into a corner and I build it by myself without talking with other people. Is that a tell walk us through how big of a mistake that is? Yeah, I think I think that one would be if we map it into the process, it would be, you know, not using personas, not having like the the, the user experience approach to things where you have to engage with stakeholders, you have to engage with the end users and figure out what they're talking about. And, um, this is, you know, another outcome of, of being in your silo, doing things in isolation is going to be low adoption again. People are going to have a dashboard that, to the earlier point, not actionable. So mm -hmm. to get something that's driving action, you need to talk to people, you need to understand who you're designing for. And only then can you really produce something that's actionable. So again, it's a, I think it's a high level mistake that people make. It's very tempting. The data is there. You know, I, I know how to use the tool. Why don't I just start building right away? Very tempting, but definitely one of the biggest mistakes. All right. And that was going to tie in. I don't, I, it, I, there's definitely overlap between this. I was going to go with a lack of change management. Yeah, that's, this is one of like the, the hidden mistakes that it's, it's hard, you know, it's like a, a you know, a, a doctor would try and diagnose a patient and okay, well, what's causing the ailment and in dashboarding, you know, ultimately, we're trying to look for high adoption, high action, uh, a high impact in the organization aligned to objectives and strategic goals. So that's all good. But what happens if that's not happening? And you've done all mm -hmm. of those things. Change management can be that that kind of secret hidden um, aspect that you might need to look into. Um, I agree it is a it is a mistake. It's not an obvious mistake, but it's one of the higher impact mistakes that if you're not bringing people along for the journey, they're not aware yeah. of the change that's going to come. If it is a truly impactful, actionable dashboard, it is going to change your organization. And, you know, anyone who's in change management, you know, anytime you're having an impact on an organization, you want an approach. Uh, to bring people on the journey, to get people aware of the change that's coming, understand what gaps are there for the change, and that we're uh, taking the appropriate steps to make sure everyone's going to be on board and ultimately going to be excited, enthusiastic about the new dashboard. So uh, it is a massive one. I think it's the potentially the biggest gap that we have in dashboarding uh, because very few people have any expertise in change management. You know, obviously, in that space, people are really good at you know data engineering, uh, dashboard development, all those good things that are needed for a, a compelling dashboard. And that probably the biggest skills gap, um, you know, is change management. Yeah, and people really do have a misconception on top of that of what change management is. People will say, "Hey, we're doing training and we're doing communications, so change management." Like, oh, oh, oh. guys, let's uh, let's talk about this a little bit more. Which is great about the uh, sessions that you lead because it. It is a very uh, prominent component of how change management works. Nick, I noticed that you have not been giving me scores. On the first one, I got a, if I'm correct, a 17 out of 11. Um, sure. What <laughs> what score would you give me for this for this last one? This one's really good. Um, I I think it's a very astute observation um, because normally folks would go with like data quality. Like, why don't we have our data quality perfect? Shouldn't we do that before we build any dashboards? You know, and, and that's a mistake because you want to mm -hmm. start right away. So I think that you picked out change management is very good. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a 19 out of six for that one. 
I like it. I'm really moving up in the world. All right. I just came up with this one, Nick. Are you ready? ready. Just right, right from here. Okay. Data quality. <laughs> Bad data quality. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, Nick. I just came that. up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, uh, high functioning mind. Um, <laughs> look, data quality. It is. Uh, I. It's usually the number one reason giving hey we don't have actionable dashboards because the data quality is bad and it's a great excuse because non-technical people don't really have a way to fight back on it and uh, but it's just not true like you can use it as an excuse and sometimes it's a very valid excuse but it's not enough reason to not start so you might have lots and lots of questions that people want to have answered and maybe 90% of the data quality is just, you know, it's terrible shape, but there's probably some part of the journey you can start. You won't answer all the questions. It's going to be a journey. It's going to take a while. Um, mm -hmm. So it is definitely like a, it's a misnomer. Um, and that's why I think it features as a mistake, but I wouldn't rank it as, I wouldn't rank it in the top five. Okay. Just, just to be clear, um, it, since you're not ranking it in the top five, I'm going to say that then it wasn't my idea. I don't know if you'd notice this, but you had just brought it up right before. Oh, I see. So it's, it's ultimately, I inadvertently put it in and it's my fault. Yes. Yeah. So I think I should score you. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear it. Zero. I'm going to give of, you a zero. Out of, out of what? Zero out of one. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a binary. So I, yeah, um, it could be minus one, zero out of minus one. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, I don't, I don't even, I've lost track of how many I, I, I've said, but I want to, I want to do this as my last one, okay. which is, um, uh, top mistake, uh, when doing dashboarding is to not consider the appearance or the UI, how it looks. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, and, and I, I think it's one area that people look at when they do have low adoption. They say, well, look, maybe we didn't design it right. Maybe it's you know, not as good looking as it could have been. And um, therefore, that's the reason for low adoption. So it's a great place to look. It is a mistake that people make. So yeah, if you have a really terrible looking dashboard, for sure, it can have an impact. Um, not top three, but maybe it's there in the top four, top five as a mistake that, you know, we have to adhere to good design standards, uh, good yeah. principles, um, you know, and not always, that doesn't always mean you have to do data visualization best practices. Sometimes it's appropriate, but, you know, you get to a point of nuance there where it's, hey, should I pick, you know, this type of chart versus that type of chart? Is that really going to impact adoption as much as having something that's actionable, having something that's aligned to strategic objectives that's measurable. Yeah, it's probably not there in terms of its impact. It's important. Maybe it's position five uh, out of the top five. You did mention something not as good looking as it could be, um, which uh, just leads me to wonder about, um, be, you know, I know that you're married, but before you were married in your dating life, um, you ever get any feedback like that? Uh, about the mugs, I, mean, I didn't have them. I didn't have the mugs back then. <laughs> Not about the mugs. You go on a first date, and uh, feedback on the date yeah, from your first that. date. No. Preposterous question. Of course not. The, the op probably the opposite. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. striking. They're like, I was expecting gold. Instead, I got platinum. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> with me, with me, they were always getting silvers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, anything else we want to talk about around the uh, top mistakes no, or I dashboard? I think we're good. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one, and you know, we'll we'll start tackling some other topics in the in the realm of analytics, and then start and go beyond there. And um, you know, looking forward to having guests on, or we can, you know, bring bring our perspective, put those questions forward, like what our perspective is on the top mistakes, but also hear from industry experts on on what they are as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. So thank you everybody for joining us on Between Two Consultants. My name's Ethan Silvers. And I'm Nicholas Kelly. Thanks so much. Have a thank great you. day. Bye.